local people, important issues. CBS 10 WILM's weekly focus on the Lower Cape Fear region. This is Byline Wilmington with your host, Don Enzel. Okay, welcome and uh, good morning. Thalian Hall is considered one of the great historic theaters in America. Built in 1858, or I guess more accurately, opened in 1858. It's now in the process of a major renovation to enhance uh, the importance of this building and uh, what it does. The driving force behind all of this and our guest this morning is the executive director of uh, Thalian Hall Center for the Performing Arts and a dear friend of mine, Tony Rivenmore. What a pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. I was telling Tony we're going to try to wrap our arms around something he could talk about for like, and has been actually for years, uh, in in our time that we have uh, for Byline Wilmington. So let's start with uh, the city broke ground in what, 1855? 18, December of 1855 was the cornerstone, and and, uh, and construction started shortly thereafter. And what led up to that? Why were they building this building? Well, I think a, a lot of reasons. Uh, for one thing, Wilmington was the largest city in North Carolina. Uh, the, the, the city government was operating out of rented space. Um, uh, we had a, a, an active uh, amateur th gentlemen's theater society, the, the Thalian Association. Which well, the, the reason you say gentlemen is women didn't get on stage and do theater. Uh, not considered not respectable uh, women. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, it was it was you know, uh, it was a special group. Right. I mean, it doesn't mean that they, people were not respected, but but uh, ladies of the town who had, were prominent would not appear on the stage. And men played both roles. Po played men and women's roles. Right, that right. was traditional in amateur theater societies. Now, the building was built as a government structure, a, a, a home for city government, and as a theater. It was, well, the, it was built as a combination city hall, library, lecture hall, armory, and theater or opera house which was a sort of a status symbol for 19th century cities. Who designed the structure? The John Montague Trimble of New York City, who was known as the Lightning Builder, and he designed some 40 theaters and concert halls in his lifetime. But one of the things, you know, that I think that led up to the building this building that I've always thought that isn't a really proven fact is that when Jenny Lynn came to Wilmington, right. a lot of people wanted her to perform. And there was no hall big enough. And I think that really got people started talking. You this know, was his, before this, Jenny Lynn was a superstar. Right. She was on her way to Charleston, right. and all we had was the Ennis Academy Theater, which stood where Thalian Hall is now. It only seated about two hundred people, and I think that's really was the clincher. But they've been talking about having a proper hall that that would be good for the community and be able to uh, uh, provide a place for the road shows and the touring artists of the day. Now you mentioned the architect. Thalian Hall has a pretty significant uh, piece of American history. It's the last surviving theater, is it Right, not it is the last surviving by this theater architect? by John Trimble. And all of his theaters are gone. This is the only theater he designed uh, that was built in the South. Uh, in 1850, you know, a, a significant number of principal New York theaters were designed by Trimble. He was, he was quite And there's quite none left. None left. They're all gone. gone. All gone. How long did it take to build? Well, uh, it, the theater portion began sometime in 1856. Um, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the first performance was in April. I, I think people must have brought their own chairs. Uh, they gave a, an amateur uh, child, uh, a dance recital. It was in April, but the official opening was October 12, 1858, with the honeymoon and the loan of the lover. That, those were the shows that yeah, they, they were doing. Yeah, they were the shows that produced that opened. Right. The now theater. the original seating number kind of surprised me. It, 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 was, it was around a thousand people, yeah. which would have been ten percent of the population of the largest city in the state of North Carolina. We don't have a building today. As a matter of fact, there's no building in the in this state in a major town that will hold ten percent of the population. So what a massive building that must have been For to watch time. go up. Yeah where people lived in one and two story houses, seeing this building that sits on a hill some 50 feet above the Cape Fear River, and the top of the building is 50 feet above that. That's 100 feet over the Cape Fear. That must have been stunning My, to watch go up. Yeah, and, and uh, I don't know how many of our viewers have or have not been in the hall, but of course there's, it's a very ornate, uh, uh, a beautiful structure. There's the stage and there's the main 
uh, floor. Then there's a uh, balcony well, slash mezzanine. Two balconies and the proscenium and the boxes. Right. And, right. But, and there's boxes, but there's a third, what I call a third tier. Right, uh, right, the third tier, yes. That, since I've been around, it's been referred to as the slave quarters, but in a private well, conversation recently, no, it, 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 it was not, not. It was not built specifically uh, for that. It was, it was a mixed uh, 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 audience. As a matter of fact, the entire theater, to some degree, was integrated when the theater first opened because we have advertisements that say half price for children and servants. So these would have been servants of family attending. That could sit anywhere in the theater? With the family. Yeah. Now, how much of that was done, I don't know. Right. You know, I wasn't around. But, but, but uh, you know, they, we do have references to that. And uh -huh. that was not an uncommon practice. Now, after the war, the, uh, the second balcony, the gallery level, was uh, pretty much a segregated part of the theater. But that was, but not, not when it was first built. All right, so the, uh, originally seated 1,000. 1,000 people. Uh, after uh, it had several incarnations and renovations, and uh, just before this new renovation started, you were seating how many? Uh, 575 on the first two levels and 100 in the gallery for a total of 675 plus eight box seats. Right. Now, after the, this renovation, after we're going to get to talk about that soon, how many will you seat? Uh, we'll still seat 100 in the gallery, 543 in the first two levels and eight in the boxes. So having the 543, 643 plus eight, what is that? Whatever, you know. Uh, but no, well, I think we lose maybe 37 seats, approximately, 37. Because seats. the new seating is a little larger. Right. Most way of the more seats, comfortable. Right. Most of the seats uh, that we're losing is in the first balcony. This was the area where you had the least leg room. Yes. Now there's 36 inches between the back, uh, the, the, the end of the chair and the front of the row, which is going to be actually more leg room than the downstairs. Let's talk about what happened to the building during the Civil War. Well, it's one of the, you know, people quite often ask that question, what happened? Well, one thing, it was really busy. Yeah. Because Wilmington was really busy. Wilmington was very prosperous. It was a, blo uh, the blockade runners came in bringing supplies to Lee's army. And so you had all these men in town. You artists, though. Oh, yeah. You had, you had all these people with disposable money and a lot of time on their hands because th their main job was to get supplies. So, so people would, would go to the theater. And uh, we had uh, Thalian Hall was operating. There was a theater operating out of the ballroom, what is now the ballroom. Uh, there was a tent theater on Fifth Avenue. Mozart Hall was operating. Uh, it was one of the Very most active, active theater centers in the entire South during the Civil War period. We're From gonna... January 1863 to January 1864, there were over 300 separate productions in Thalian Hall. Stay with us. We're going to talk more with the executive director of Thalian Hall Center for the, for the Performing Arts, Tony Weibermark. Roller skating and wrestling in Thalian Hall. We'll talk about it when we come back. Stay with us.